Hello, everyone. Um, my name is uh, Harshal Patel. You probably know me from the NF Core community. Um, and so today, I thought maybe it'd be a great idea to, to have um, some sort of video that we can use for um, people coming to contribute to the hackathon in a couple of weeks' time. Hopefully, you guys have signed up. It's going to be it's going to be awesome. Um, so the idea is that here is that to, to record a video which we can then use as a reference um, for, for anyone that would like to contribute to, to, the, to the hackathon, because the major theme is going to be around um, DSL2 and contributing to NF core modules. Uh, and just to, to, to make the, the barrier of entry a little bit lower and also possibly to have this video up as well on, on YouTube just a bit more persistently for, for others that, that wanted to see how to, how to go about this process. So I've recently joined Secura Labs as head of scientific development. Um, and I was at the CRIC before, but now it's a completely different challenge, awesome environment to work in, um, lots of new and challenging different things. Hopefully a lot of this will be fed back into the NFCore community as well, which is, which is great. So let's get started. Uh, so basic requirements uh, in order for you to be able to contribute to NF core modules. So NF core modules, sorry, I didn't introduce it in the slide before, is a, a, a repository that we've created that can essentially contains tool wrappers. So basic command line tools like BWA index, BWMM, SAM tools, index, and so on, FastQC. And the idea is that we want to be able to host these um, DSL2 Nextflow DSL2 wrapper scripts that we can then share across the NFCore pipelines and also within the, the, the Nextflow community. So in order to be able to contribute to NFCore modules, um, there, there are a few basic requirements. So uh, obviously an operating system where you have um, some sort of command line access, um, a, a really, really cool blog came out recently, in fact, yesterday, I think it was, um, for using Nextflow with Windows WS, WSL2, which is what I've been using for a month and it's absolutely amazing. Um, you also need some sort of software management. So generally, um, Nextflow uh, works by um, uh, by using uh, containerization like Docker or Singularity in order to make things reproducible. Um, and also, you can use use Conda as well, um, although it's, it's it's slightly less reproducible because lower level dependencies change over time. Um, but you, you it, ideally, you would have either Docker or Singularity installed locally, or, or in your HPC environment, or, or wherever you're, you're running. Um, these commands. And then also a code editor to, to help you um, uh, obviously edit code and then make things a bit more seamless in terms of the way that you're saving stuff. Maybe even um, some of these editors have Git integration, which is really cool. Um, and we've developed a, an extension pack specifically for, uh, for NF Core with a bunch of extensions. Um, this is for VS Code at the moment, uh, where you can um, get a, a bundle of, of um, extensions which would be relevant to the way that we work on NFCore, we think are useful when, when editing code on NFCore. Uh, so you'll see um, my little face underneath what I tend to use. Um, so Windows, Singularity, Conda, and, and, and VS Code. But again, it's, it's completely up to you how you go about this and what you use. Uh, in terms of software requirements, uh, you would need Git installed because everything on NFCore is virtually done via Git in terms of contributions. So um, you would need that installed locally. Uh, Nextflow, uh, which is ridiculously easy to install with, with a single line like that. You can easily use, use wget or curl. You can even install it in a Conda environment if you, if you want to. Um, but it, it's really sort of low level. Uh, it requires a low level of maintenance. Um, uh, once you've really got it installed, you can even self-update it and so on. Uh, you would need NFCore tools, which is our Python package to, uh, to help uh, make things easier in terms of um, maintaining the fr framework on, um, on the pipeline side, on the module side. It's also got a bunch of additional functionality that allows you to um, uh, create pipeline templates, create module templates lint for best practices and, and so on. So there's a whole heap of commands that you can use there. And we're constantly developing and, and, and contributing to that to make it, to make it even better. Um, you will also need PyTest workflow uh, for this particular instance to contribute to NF core modules because we use that for all of the, um, I guess you could call it unit testing that we're doing with modules. So PyTest workflow was our choice of being able to 
um, uh, test. Whenever someone adds a modules to NFCore modules, we associate that with a minimal test data set. And in order, to, in order to make sure that things haven't changed across time and so on, what you can then do is you can um, use something like PyTest Workflow, for example, to um, test against MD5 sums that you, you would have created relative to the outputs of that particular module. Um, and if they're changed, why have they changed? Um, and, and it just gives you an opportunity to, to sort of um, be a bit more um, stringent with the way that you're, you're updating these modules and also to have tests to make sure that these files exist and so on. The way that I generally manage um, NFCore tools and PyTest and other sort of um, uh, linting sort of dependencies is just to have a separate dev environment for NFCore. And so I've, I've just um, pasted that in here for you to see where I've just got NFCore, the latest version, and, and PyTest workflow. I install that in an environment. And then whenever I want to use these on the command line, I just source this environment and they're available for me to use. So it's, it's quite low level in terms of maintenance. If I don't want it, I can remove the environment or I can install another environment or I can even install dependencies within this environment once I've sourced into it. So the typical way would be you have a file like this, um, you do conda and create, then you can source into it. Uh, I would definitely recommend upgrading um, NFCore tools to the latest dev version because as I mentioned before, it's constantly evolving. And so the module template and all sorts of other things that, that um, uh, are in the dev version of NFCore tools will be different to the latest released version. And as much as we'd like to do more frequent release releases, realistically, we haven't been. So um, the best way to get around that is to periodically run this command. Um, these are all copy and pasteable, by the way. I'll make these slides available so you can just copy and paste these commands directly. Um, and then you can install them, the dev version of NFCore tools to, um, to then you know, create your own modules. And so as I show you a bit later on. Uh, we've got loads of docs. We've got loads of videos now. They're, they're accumulating over time. So um, have a look. Again, these, these are all linked here. So you can, you can have a look um, just by directly clicking on these links or, or going to the appropriate web pages. Um, so there's a lot of documentation. It'd be great if you can have a read of that. Um, and if there are any issues, then you know, you know, we try and maintain and be you know, as up to date with those as possible, report them back. Um, and, and then we can sort of keep on updating them um, so that so they um, are current enough. Uh, we've had a numerous DSLT based talks as well, bite sized talks um, about adding test data, PyTest workflow, which I just mentioned, module development and so on. I'm giving another one next week about how you sort of start writing your own DSL2 pipelines. Um, so maybe you, you know it, it'd be worth tuning into that. But again, these these will be available on YouTube as well in the future. So if you want to watch them later on down the line, you can if you want. So um, the first thing to do if you want to contribute to NFCore modules is to make sure that the module isn't already on NFCore modules. So we've got a command for that called NFCore modules list, which is part of the NFCore tools package. And that will just tell you all of the modules that are installed in NFCore modules. I mean, the, the other way obviously would be then also for you to be able to go directly to the GitHub repo and see there as to, as to what's listed. But this just provides you a nice command line interface to, to do exactly the same thing. Um, you check open pull requests um, and search issues uh, on NFCore modules to see whether that someone's already not working on that module because there can be overlap in terms of module requirements um, where one pipeline would be working on one or require a module and so would another. And so um, we would like to avoid um, clashing in terms of development. And so everyone, you know, it just doesn't duplicate contributions and tries to organize things a little bit better. And this is kind of the philosophy and, and the approach will be, we'll be taking at the hackathon as well, where um, the first thing you would do is look whether the module has been contributed. If it hasn't, then the next step would be to create a new issue with the module um, and assign yourself to that issue. This is quite important because in order for us to know that someone's working on this module, um, so say for example, someone else goes, and wants to contribute the same module and they find an open issue with um, for this exactly the same module. If you haven't assigned yourself to work on that module, then we won't know that it's being worked on and someone else will assign themselves to it. And it may end up again, duplicating work. So um, it'd be great if you can um, assign yourself so, so it will help organize things a little bit better. Um, so the first thing you need to do, uh, I, I won't go into the, the, the nitty gritty greta, uh, details about this, but um, the first thing you need to do is obviously get GitHub set up um, and have uh, 
a clone of the, the modules repo locally that you can then you can contribute to. So the process in, to summarize is basically you need to you need to fork the NF core modules to your own GitHub account, and then you clone it from your GitHub account locally. Uh, you you set the, the main NF core modules repo as your upstream. You only have to do this once when you first clone the repo. Um, and then you create um, a local branch uh, off the master branch of uh, NF core modules um, to then contribute and make your changes to. Uh, there was a bite-sized talk uh, that Alex gave uh, a while back about how you can attempt to start setting this stuff up. But once you've got it set up, um, it's generally quite, quite simple. Uh, so in this case, uh, when you want to create a module, again, we've got commands specifically for this. So NF core modules create will do that. And the way this works is that we've got a, a, a modules template in the NF core tools GitHub repo. And we're again, we're constantly evolving that as, as things change um, and standards change and we're adding new functionality and stuff. But we've got a minimal pipe uh, modules template in the modules uh, in the NF core tools repository. And what we're doing with NF core modules create is pulling that down and replacing um, the module name and, and other things like the author and, and um, other information that you might require in order to create that module when you run NF core modules create. So it's a bit like it's, we're using Ginger on, in, on the back end to do that uh, and, it, and it works relatively well. So we only have one modules template and then you can use on NF core modules create to do that. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and do a live demo, which um, could or could not work. Let's see how it pans out. Um, there's some more steps here in terms of test data and stuff, but maybe we can just work our way through it. Um, but overall, I think you'll see that there's only six files. Once you've run NF core modules create, that should generate six files. This functions NF may be redundant soon, so it, it could just be five very soon. Um, but you only really need to edit four of these files in order to contribute a module. Um, and so I'll take you through that process now. So if I come out of this presentation. Uh, right, so for this particular talk, um, I asked Maxime and Rike for a module that they needed to add to Sarek um, that I could use as a demo. And so they sent me this um, stroke somatic um, module that they've written up and integrated into the SARIC pipeline. And so, again, this will be similar to how we do things in, in the hackathon as well, where we have loads of modules that have already been written um, but need to be contributed. And this sort of provides again, a low barrier of entry for, for new beginners because the module's already been written. It's just a, a case of figuring out how to add the module and, and the test data alongside with it. Um, and so, if we can you know, branch that sort of work out, then it will or make it much easier that way. Right, so this is the module that we want to add. Um, if I open a terminal, uh, what we have, I have a shortcut to the modules repo that I've got cloned. I'm currently on the master branch, but again, I've got another shortcut or an alias where I want to create a branch off master um, called, let's say, stroker. Right, so now we've just got a clean branch that's, that's been um, created off the master branch of NF core modules. Um, I've also got another shortcut. Shortcuts are really cool because it just means you type less, um, which allows me to source. Um, so if I do grep NF core conda, I've got this bash aliases file with a bunch of aliases. So essentially all that command is doing is just activating that dev environment that I explained to you in the presentation. And so it just means I don't have to type the whole thing. So now I should have NF core, the NF core command available for me to use. Um, so let's do NF core modules create, maximize this. There we go. So now we know the name of the tool is stroke somatic. So put that in there. Now what's really cool is that we're, we're, we're querying um, uh, the buyer containers API, I think it is. So if if um, if possible, what tools will do is it will find um, an existing buyer container that begins with Stroker. So you can see it's automatically found the the buyer con uh, buy container packages and the conda packages that need to be substituted in the module. So you don't have to go and look for it. Uh, that's me. 
Um, let's set this process resource label. So these are just gen general setting for resources. We'll just set it to low for now. Um, and then a meta map. So a meta map is essentially um, sample information that you need to propagate through the pipeline along with any other files. So um, in general, you would need this sort of information. So the, the most basic form of, of information in that meta map would be the ID of the sample or whether it's single end or not, or whether or what the strandedness is, for example. Um, and so in most instances, you will need it. In some instances, you won't, where, for example, you're creating an index for a genome, which is completely independent of any sample information. And so you may not need that meta information. But in this case, because um, this particular tool is a variant caller, um, it will be part of the flow of the pipeline in terms of passing the sample information through. And so we will need it. So let's put a yes there. And like I showed you, um, there are six files that have been created um, and we will need to only edit actually four of these. So if we do git status um, and we do a diff on, that, on there. So this PyTest modules is essentially just a list of the modules we've got on NFCore modules. And that's what we use. Um, that's what PyTest uses to essentially slurp up all of the modules and then figure out um, how to where, where all the files are to do the testing and stuff. And so you can see the only difference there that it's done is this automatically added this job systematic in the correct place in this file in alphabetical order. So we don't need to do anything more with that file. Um, but what we do need to do is, is now add our module in. So if we just, if I just open up VS code in this directory, you will see there's some green bits here where we've added files. So here's a stroker module that we've just created. Yeah. So this, like I mentioned, has been created off the modules template. When you use NFCore modules create, it comes with loads of to-do statements and other stuff that hopefully will help you write this module. Um, so what I would need to do is because I want to base it off this module, what I'm going to do is I'm going to clone this locally. Um, let's do it in code. Here we go, we've got a terminal here as well. So let's do a doubly get. Right, so we've got this, we've got the module that, that Maxime and Rike had written locally now. So let's just call it something else to, to, to make it a bit more informative. Um, now, let's try and load it up in here and split down. And yeah. Right, so now this will allow us to compare. Let's just minimize this for now. We don't need the terminal. This will allow us to compare the, the, the modules together, the one that we just created off the template, which we now need to change, and the one that they've written. So let's just get rid of all these to do's for now because um, it's just bedtime reading, really. Um, so this bit's the same. This is just boilerplate. Um, we've got the meta ID, which is the same there. What they've put is a process high. So let's change that there, which means that this particular process has higher resource requirements. Um, this stuff again is boilerplate, so you won't need to change. And in fact, a lot of this stuff will be removed when we move to a more native Nextload syntax, but maybe um, I'll talk a bit about that a bit later on. Um, so this again, we can remove. Um, and of course, create has found exactly the, the correct containers and stuff we want. So we don't need to play around with that. Um, and now the more important things. Um, so again, this is exactly the same. The more important things are how to stage the files. So um, because this is the template again, we don't want that. We'll copy the ones that they used into here. Um, what you would normally do for this sort of reference data file as well, instead of providing this as a tuple, um, you would provide them separately because it just makes it easier for you not to have to join channels and stuff. You can keep them independently. So let's just remove that. Um, and then the output files that they've defined. Let's copy that across. Um, so according to guideline, uh, the NFCore guidelines, these would all have to go in their own channels. 
So let's split these out now as well. Um, I do this way. Let's put that up there. Put that there. Um, and this is the old syntax for the versions stuff, which has been changed on the dev branch. Um, so we will use this syntax now and just get rid of that. This is just from the template, which we don't need. And so let's bring it all together like that. Um, a couple more init statements here. These are all VCF, so maybe it's probably better to just prefix with VCF. So TBI. Let's do these. That's TBI. And that's indels. So we've got indels. TBI for the indels. SNVs. And TBI for that. Okay, great. Then some more guidelines. But just delete that for now. And now we're onto the script section that they're using. Again, these are old options from the old modules template. So we don't need that. We don't need that. Um, this is some custom options that they've added to their tool. So let's copy that across. Um, so that's been dealt with. And this prefix again is, um, is, is fine in, in the modules template. So we don't need that. In fact, you probably wouldn't. Um, append custom names like this to the prefix. You can you can actually um, maybe do that another way um, via the naming functionality. So we'll just stick to what whatever was in the, the modules template. Now, obviously in the template, again, we've got a sample sort command, which obviously won't work here because we want to run Stroker. So let's just copy across the entire script section that they've got as well. And so now this command looks looks fine to me. What they're doing is they are calling all of these input files here, 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 the reference faster, these options that they've provided if you provide a target bed file um, and running Strelka. So that all looks good. Um, and then at the end here, they're renaming, maybe we rename the dots there because it just gives you a more natural break in the names. We would have to change the output files again as well. Uh, and the versions, we've changed the way that we're, we're reporting versions um, recently. And so this versions.txt has been replaced by a YAML using hair docs. And so this no longer applies. But we can, again, this is a, one of the great things is that if someone else has added a module, you can just see have a look and see what they've done and just copy it across because it will work for you as well. So this is the one for sand tools, which obviously we don't want. Um, but what I've just done there is replace the version command um, for this particular tool of Strelka that we're running. So I think We've got a semi-decent looking module here. Um, how does it look? Yeah. Okay, great. So the next thing you do is um, we have this meta YAML that has information about the inputs and outputs generated by the module, a description and so on. So the next thing you would do is, is amend this file and, and change the appropriate values in that. So, so for example, we've got an input for cryo normal. Could put that in there. Um, let's copy that out. Um, and then we have one for tumor with the American spelling. Disgraceful. Um, like that. And then what have we got? We've got cram, cry, cram, cry, right? Cram, cry. 
um, cry. And these would just become like that. And this is actually an index file and not the So it looks like we've done that. And then you would also obviously need to add um, entries for these four as an input as well. Um, and similarly, any output files, so VCF indels and so on, you'd, you'd need to then have the appropriate entries in here. I mean, that's, that's one of the most common things that generally gets forgotten because it gets out of sync and stuff. And ideally we have some sort of linter for this, but it's, yeah. Yeah, we haven't really got around to that because it would mean parsing all of these strings in Python and then linting against that to see whether they've been provided in the YAML and so on. Um, so at the moment, this is quite a manual process, but it's definitely worth double checking that, you know, as you update modules um, uh, and, and they're ready for review, for example, that all of these entries are actually matching what you have in this meta YAML. And hopefully one day we'll, we'll use it for something um, um, that you know, some sort of automation um, on the website or or, or in else or elsewhere. Um, okay, so that's the meta YAML. This is unfinished, but it needs to be finished. It's just a case of copying, pasting, adding more description and text and so on. Um, so great. So now you've written the module. You've copied across um, whatever um, was written in a local module already. Here, um, I don't think we need this one anymore. Uh, you need to add some tests for this now. So. We already have a lot of test data um, on the NF Core test data sets repository, and that is listed in this config file that we've got under tests config, test data config. So as you can see, we've really been filling this out, um, and we've got human data. Um, we've also primarily recommend using SARS-CoV-2 data because it's tiny. Um, uh, there's been a lot of it around recently, and also we can um, derive a lot of the, the downstream files for that. We're not really being very stringent about um, the tests other than the fact that they they need to pass at the moment. Um, we're not doing anything more informative about that. So, you know, you can use um, SARS-CoV-2 data on tools that expect bacteria, bacterial data, for example, as long as it passed, we're happy. Um, there's nanopore data uh, and so on. So we've already got a lot of this in um, the modules repo. Uh, what you would need to do, as I'll show you, is reference this data for the purposes of your tests. So um, if we go back and see, so now the files in modules we've edited and changed. We now need to edit and change the test files, which have also been created by the template to make things a bit easier. So if we have a look at what they look like, we've got the stroke of somatic. So you have this main script just to run the tests. Now, um, we need to figure out, okay. So now we need to figure out how we can run this particular stroke of somatic process using the test data that we've got in that test data sets file. And in order to do that, what we need to do is, is, is prepare the test data in exactly the same way as we would run it normally and provide all of the input files and, and then test the module and see how it works. So great thing is that we can borrow from the already existing Stroker germline module here um, and just copy across some of these files directly. In fact, yeah, let's just copy these for now because we know that we need a faster NFI. So let's copy those across straight away. Um, you also need um, a bed um, and a bed TBI. So let's just have these in there for now and then go away and look and see whether we've got any files, existing files we can borrow from the test data sets. Um, so is the Homo sapiens. Yeah, that's all SARS-CoV-2. So we're going to use Homo sapiens data here. So let's replace the keys here with Homo sapiens. Another benefit of having standardized test data is that you can do this sort of thing quite easily and switch between organisms. Um, I see we've got a bed file here. Let's 
So we'll just replace the big file with that. And then we've got an index for that as well. So we'll just replace the index there with that. Right, so we've got bed, TBI, FASTA, FI. Now we need to prepare this massive channel of tumor normals along with the associated indexes. So this is the meta map. I think it's paired end. So this just says that it's paired end, which is great. I don't have to do anything there. Let's restructure this slightly. Move that on this new line so we can see exactly what's in here. On. So now we're going to be using human Illumina data and we want cram files. Have we got cram files? Here we go. Cram files. So let's replace that in there. So the first is a cram normal. So we'll just use um, that. Oops. Let's just copy this because we know we need four in total. Um, and then we want the cry there. And then we've also got a second set, which we can use for this particular instance where um, this was added by Rike for, for, for very, very calling where you need a tumor normal, so you need independent BAM files and stuff. And so the testing sometimes can break and doesn't work if you don't have the appropriate test data to test it with. Um, and so this is specifically added for the SARIC pipeline. And so now we've got test and test two. Um, in fact, I could have just copied and put a two in front. But just copy it across like that. All right, and so now we need to add the channels to match up with what we've got there. So the input contains all of those, which we can see here now. And now we need to add a phi, a bed, a bed, a TBI, like that. Cool. So now we've set everything up in order to test this module, we just need to test it. Um, and the way that we're generally doing that is um, we use, we've written again another tool to make this easier called um, uh, expanded terminal. Right. So now we're in the modules repo. We don't need the stroke local anymore because we've got everything we needed from it. Um, We've got another tool called NF Core Modules Create Test YAML. And what this does is it it, it gets the all of the output files generated by this particular module um, with your test run will we'll generate, um, as you can see here, it will generate these output files here. And so what it essentially does is it automates this process for you and creates and lists a, a YAML file with the appropriate MD5 sums. We've also added some functionality which reruns the test as well, which is pretty cool because we found that we were really running it once and a lot of the MD5 sums when you actually run the module, added a main script to test the module. And now we just want to create a YAML file that contains MD5 sums and so on. And so what we'll do is give it a tool name. This is standard. So yes, that is the output path. Overwrite it. Yes, because the current one is just something that is looking for an output file that doesn't exist. Again, it's from the template. So it's, it's all vanilla stuff. This needs to be changed. And so an example also is there's a to-do statement there to telling you that you need to run this command and that will overwrite all of this for you automatically. So let's overwrite it. It's looking for entry points to run PyTest. It's running this particular test. Um, let's press enter. So for most of this, you just have to press enter. Um, we, I use singularity locally, so let's use singularity. And now what it will do is it was it will run Nextflow for you on this test file. Look at the outputs generated by that and and write a test YAML file with all of the MD5 sums. And like I mentioned, it repeats the test just to make sure that the MD5 sums are, are stable in the file. Oops. 
we go. So it all looks good. I mean, this is a perfect use case scenario. A lot of the time this will actually break um, because there might be an issue with um, the input files or the, or the main script and so on. There are ways around that. You can test that locally with PyTest as well. Um, and I'll show you how to do that um, at the end. But this is just um, a, a using NFCore tools to do this. And you can rerun the NFCore, create test YAML tool multiple times to, to achieve exactly the same behavior too. So it looks like we've got this test module. So this now should be updated. There we go. With um, actual MD5 sums. And we've got a comment here saying that the file was, this happens a lot with gzip files because um, there are some things that, that are put in these gzip files. Um, that means that if you do an MD5 sum now and do it in 10 minutes, then it will be completely different. And so um, there is an option if you're directly invoking gzip called, I think dash dash no name or something um, that, that, that allows you to um, buy, might be name related. Um, so it allows you to bypass this and make the MB5 some um, stable, but because it seems like Strelka is directly creating these gzip files, there's no way for us to provide that option to gzip because it's doing it internally. And so what we would have to do is just um, test for the path ex files existence. And the only way to do that would be just to say, okay, this path has to exist. Um, and these are options that you can use. So this format of YAML is um, specific to PyTest workflow. It's got a bunch of options. Again, in the slides that I've got, you've got links to that. You can test for MD5 sums, you can test for file contents, you can test for a bunch of other things. You can test for whether files don't contain contents. Um, so it's quite flexible. But for now, we know we can't use this um, to test for anything other than the file existence. So we'll just save that. Uh, that should be it. So just before you submit any pull requests to NFCore modules, it's all, always worth testing again. So what you can do, like I mentioned, is also use PyTest locally and we've got a command um, to do that. You can, if you've installed PyTest workflow in your environment, like I showed you before, you can directly call the module by the tag in the command as well. And it will just test that module locally for you. And so these are some environment variables. These, I think this one is specific to single, this template is specific singularity. Um, but there's this NFCore modules test, which again might disappear soon in the future as we're ironing stuff out. But for now it's, it's required to, for, the, for the new version syntax that we've added. So if we run this command, what that will do is it will run PyTest um, and PyTest will invoke these Nextflow commands, um, generate the output files, and then test whether they match against the ones in the test YAML that we've just created. So now everything looks great. All of it is passing. Um, this is you know, an ideal world scenario. It won't always be like this. So just a word of warning, you could very well see a lot of red here, um, but it's, it's a nice way of locally sort of troubleshooting um, uh, problems with modules before you push them just by running this single command here. And then what you can do, if there are any issues, you can go into the, the directory for the module, like here. Um, and you'll have logs here, the log error, which is no error because it passed. Um, log out, this is just the output of next flow running. Um, and then the outputs as well here, that the, the actual module generates. So um, here, and then the output of the versions YAML, which is just the command of Strelka. And so that's, that's another way that you can troubleshoot. Um, so based on the slides, we've looked for keys for existing test data. There are documentation for adding test data too. Um, uh, not all test data is obviously existing. And so you may need some different test data for modules. Um, if you have any questions, ask us in Slack or um, contributed directly to NFCore test data sets as a modules branch there. Um, I showed you how to do this and also the PyTest workflow option. So all of the different ways that you can specify in that test YAML, how to test for different things. Um, it's always a good idea to test with PyTest locally and you can also do NFCore modules lint, um, which checks the module against best practices that we've got in the template. So I'll skip over that for now. 
but great. So we've got, now got a module. Um, we need to we need to contribute it back. So um, what we need to do is we need to stage those stage those changes. I mean, I could, could do this in VS Code as well, but I'll do it here. So so this is just adding that module to the get an internal registry type that we've got for PyTest. Um, then this is the first time we're adding the module and the tests. In fact, what I should have done, um, preaching, while I'm preaching is assign myself to this module, which I will do now. Um, so add, uh, somatic module, push that. All right, so now when I look at the modules repo, what, what issue was that? Two on two. Push the changes. So now I can create a pull request to master that closes. Two on two. Create a pull request there. All right. And so those tests that we had will also be run here. PyTest workflow will figure out that there's only one module that's been changed. And so it will only run the tests for um, Stroker, hopefully. Um, we only have changed five, uh, six files. The functions.nf is fairly standard. And again, it, it will disappear soon. Um, this is the module that we've just written. Uh, this is the meta YAML that still needs a bit of work, but this is just, just so I can show you what's going on. Um, this is appending the Stroker somatic there. These are the tests that we've just added. Um, and this is the YAML file that tests the outputs. Um, so um, in the case of the TBI files, they won't change across time. And so you can use MD5 sums and stuff for those. And these tests will also now be run when, so you can see here that we've got a bunch of things going on, that the module's being linted. Um, we've got code linting for markdown, for editor config, which checks for spaces and other weird stuff. So it just makes the code allows us to see whether there's any discrepancies with the way that the module is run within these trees. And sometimes you do see discrepancies. So it's great to iron them out. Generally, the, the discrepancies are between um, uh, Docker and Singularity versus Conda. Conda, because of the, way, the fact that it can change and it's not entirely reproducible and it's not containerized, um, we do see tests passing for Docker and Singularity and failing for Conda. To fail with Conda um, because it's not containerized. So great, a Docker. Uh, once this, once you're happy with this pull request and everything is passing, what you can do is you can add a label here called ready for review. And you can even request reviewers if you're working with particular people. Um, you know, it's, it'd be great if people contribute more to reviewing and stuff. I know it's, it's probably a bit of a learning curve and you need to know what you're doing first. Um, but um, the more people that review, um, you know, it, it will just help turn the wheel on this, on this type of stuff um, a lot quicker. And so you can even request reviewers. If you have any questions, you can ask us on Slack or you can, you can add us here. I think there's a modules team or something at, I can't remember now, or someone created one. Um, but yeah, there's some sort of team one as well here that you can you can at people with. Um, and so what will happen, as you can see in the pull request now, it's ready for review. There's a bunch of others that are ready for review. It just makes things more visible. So if someone wants to come in and review a bunch of, of pull requests, then they can they can just go in and do that straight away. So these are still running. Let's go back to the slides. Get test passing on the pull request, ready for review. You, you'll get um, hopefully some reviewer comments as to what to do next and stuff. And that's pretty much it, I think. I mean, this has been a relatively painless edition where I haven't seen, you know, much red flags or any red flags popping up. But 
I think you get the gist. I mean, if there are, then then you would just need to change the tests or play with the tests or add the appropriate test data. Um, and once you've done it once or twice, I think I think you'll get get the idea of how to do this. Um, So yeah, there's, there's a bunch of stuff up and coming as well um, uh, in terms of the way that we deal with DSL2. Uh, and I created a prototype pull request um, for this to show you what would be changing. Um, and so we wouldn't need the functions.nf anymore. And a lot of this stuff, because obviously these are being imported from the functions.nf, we won't need these functions or this import statement. We won't need these publishing options anymore. Um, and now what we will be doing, um, uh, something that Mahesh has been working on with uh, on the RNA-seq pipeline, porting the entire pipeline from end to end using a next, native Nextflow syntax, we can use the task extension directive to just directly pass options from a config file, like the modules config, um, where you use, I don't know, with name, stroke or somatic, um, task.extension is this, for example, um, task.extension.suffix is this, or task.extension.args in the case of passing um, module arguments like this, then they would come directly from the config to the module, which means you don't need to initialize these options now all over the place in your modules, sub workflows, all of those locations. So it will clean up the syntax quite a lot. Um, in fact, Paolo, I think, told me today that he's merged in this, the with name um, issue we had where the with name when using with name in a config, it was incorrectly reporting a warning. And this will be awesome because if we're using with name for everything and you get a bunch of warnings, that'd be confusing, but hopefully that's been fixed now. So we can move on to the next step of, of using that. So yeah, keep your eyes peeled. Things will change. Um, they're evolving um, for the better. And um, yeah, here's, here's a link to the prototype PR and some summary of changings. Again, these, these links all work. So, um, have a go at clicking on them and I'll try and share them with you. If you have any questions, the standard um, communications uh, channels, Slack, GitHub, Twitter, YouTube. Uh, thank you all for listening uh, and for your contributions and for getting us this far and hopefully um, see you at the hackathon in a couple of weeks. Um, so thanks. And hopefully this helps to um, and get your contributions on NF core modules. Um, look forward to them. Thank you.